Hey everybody, this is uh, Larry. This is day 28 of the 30 day decode challenge. Uh, seems like we probably will have a, pro uh, have a new problem, so let's see. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I right, have first unique number, let's give it a go. Uh, first unique number, you have a queue of integers, you need to retrieve the first unique integer in the queue. Implement the first unique class, oh, that's interesting. First unique initialize the object with the numbers in the queue. Um, Show first unique return to value of the first unique integer of the queue, return negative one if there's no such integer, and add inserts a value to the queue. Okay. So first unique, two, three, five, and then now still five, five, two, uh, two, three, five. Okay. Is there like a removal? Why is this a. Oh. Oh, I was going to ask, why is this a queue? If you're just inserting it, am I missing something weird? I mean, like, it's just like, you could even call it a bag, right? Like, it doesn't have to be a queue. That's my question. Um, hmm. well, I guess there is a first in the sense that, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, first in the sense that because it's a queue, I mean, you use a queue because it's a first, because after a while it stops being first and so forth. Um, okay, so I think uh, I get the, some ideas here. Uh, N is 10 to the 100,000. So I think the naive algorithm uh, that I might kind of uh, first think about is, well, let's just do something naive, right? Which is uh, every time you insert, um, Every time you add an value to the queue, go through the entire queue to see what um, uh, to kind of remove the first item thing, right? Uh, so that's probably not going to run in time uh, because um, because if you keep on inserting, then that's going to take an n square uh, construction time, and n in this case is ten to the fifth, which is hundred thousand, right? So now we try to think about ways to be optimized uh, and. For these kind of problems, or just a lot of problems in general, uh, what I try to find is something what I call the invariant of a problem, uh, and that means something that doesn't change when it, uh, with respect to this problem, right? And what doesn't change for me uh, that jumped, or something that jumped out at me a little bit, was that um, the first unique is just kind of, eh, maybe first is a little bit weird, but maybe like the earliest unique. Uh, in this case, uh, whenever a number becomes not unique, um, it doesn't, like it doesn't flip back and forth, right? There's no, um, like it, you can look at each uh, number as a state of some sort of like, okay, here's a, here's a number, it's unique, it's great. Uh, once it not become unique because you added another two to it, for example, in this case, um, then it doesn't go back ever. So you never have to think about it again. Uh, so that's kind of the thing that I would maybe think about. Um, and then now, um, how would I um, how would I do this in a good way, right? So one thing that I'm thinking about now uh, is, well, knowing that that's the case, um, I have two dots because some of some of these. Well, my first dot, my first uh, more naive dot is that I think we could use a priority queue for this, um, and in the queue, if we only the Q each number once, um, then we're going to get, you know, n log n, so that's okay. That's way more than okay, right? Uh, and the priority of an item would be, um, yeah, and the priority of an item would be uh, uh, just the index value uh, on a min heap. Uh, but can we do better? I think that's what I'm trying to think right now. Uh, and I think you can, I mean, I think maybe it's even more trivial than that. Maybe I'm making it more complicated than necessary, which is that um, using a lookup table, we could just keep track of what's unique. And then uh, whenever we show the first unique, we could amortize the cost uh, because at that point, you're going to DQ at most once uh, for, each, uh, for each number. Uh, and at most, there'll be uh, 50,000 cost. So that's way fast enough because it's constant. 
the biggest thing would be the space, but at 100,000 plus at most 50,000. So 150,000 would be way more than uh, good enough. Uh, I think these two things don't really matter. So, so yeah. So that's what I think I'm going to do then. Uh, I was, I think I definitely try to complicate things a little bit with priority queue. Uh, but, but now that I think about it, but yeah. But I think I'm going to try to implement that and then see how that goes. Um, yeah. And uh, initialize objects to the numbers in the queue. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't see why we can just do, um, like we can't, we should be able to use add in the initializer is what I was going to say. Like for something like uh, for num and nums, uh, self dot add value or something like that, right? Uh, but of course we have to set, uh, initialize some stuff first. Um, let's see, what, how, what how do we want to do it? Uh, I mean, I think we could just use collections.q, dot, dot deck, so we can, uh, so that we could remove from the front, uh, and then we just have a lookup table, uh, and that could be a set because it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then, um, and then, yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, I think you could also use a collection that actually this should be you should keep track of the count. Uh, I mean, it's more like a boolean count. So, um, so that the first time you insert it, uh, it's unique. The second time you insert it, it is no longer unique. I think that's the idea. Um, and you could maybe use either two sets or for, for my purposes, I'm just going to do a, a hash table with, uh, yeah. And that add now will just be okay. So we put in the lookup. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I I was just thinking that maybe I could use the default uh, deck, which is a Python uh, data structure, but it's not necessary in this case. I think we could just uh, to be a little bit clear, uh, do this to go equals true. Or well, let's just add one. Why not? Uh, else, uh, it goes one, right? Set this, and again, I understand that this could be in uh, the default deck, but I just want to be more expressive and more um, explicit about uh, some of the coding just for education purposes, educational purposes. Um, and then, yeah, and then we just add it to the back of the queue. Oops. Uh, just push value, right? That'll be my add, add. And then now, um, on a sh first show unique, we do a pop, a uh, pop left. Uh, so self dot, oops, self dot deck dot pop left. Uh, let's get the value for that. Oops. Oh, and let's check that. Um, I wanted to do do while loop, but uh, but I think well, Python doesn't really have it. But uh, but we should also just check uh, solve that deck is equal to zero. Just return negative one. Um, otherwise, uh, the value is equal to pop left. Uh, and then now, if uh, value in solve that lookup and solve that lookup. Oops. Of value is greater than or equal to two, then we then well let's just, this could be a while loop as well. Uh, then value is equal to self dot deck dot pop left. Uh, yeah, I could have to I have to do a peak first. I think actually sorry, so the peak. I think now it's just the first element I think in Python. Uh, so we should do a pop left and then do, and then now because of that, we have to do, uh, and then the first is 
you then zero and this uh, and then now um, and now we check again I think there may be a cleaner way to write this per se but uh, but now uh, but we do this amortized factor and then now we oops uh, the one of the Q which is uh, zero I just actually don't need this, I just need a... Uh, I don't know if this is more clear or not, but uh, yeah. Uh, and then let's run it real quick. Are there multiple? Oh, they do give us multiple examples, that's great. Uh, oh, I removed it. Oh, why did I have value in here? Well, maybe I'll still get the function parameter. Is it push? Oh, is it a pen? Whoops. Uh, <laughs> I'm mixing my languages. Uh, yeah, so it looks okay. So the only thing that I would worry about this uh, is probably performance in general. Uh, but, you know, look at, uh, I'm going to sum it right now, but um, looking at this performance, uh, each item is only going to be popped once, so it's going to be all of one in terms of the items um, per item. So it's always going to be, I mean, it's a little bit amortized. So, uh, so it's going to be all of one amortized for each uh, operation, but all of n overall. So yeah, and it, we see that it's accepted, so yay. Um, yeah, um, I think this is a potentially tricky problem. I think we just, like I said, my, uh, my strategy for attacking these types of problems is, uh, again, finding the invariant, which means some things that, um, you know, doesn't change as the uh, problem progresses on. Because uh, the idea is that, okay, because um, I think the, the thing I'm trying to uh, illustrate is that if there was a remove function, then this becomes uh, much harder. I don't know if it's impossibly hard, but it's much harder uh, because now you have to maintain states that goes back and forth. But now it's almost, my idea is that uh, once you put something in uh, and it, like, like, for example, in this case, two, three, and five, or two, three, and five are all valid answers, but then you try to do something so that you modify that answer so that like, well, uh, two or two, three or five may not be candidates anymore in the future, and once it no longer becomes a candidate, uh, it it can never be true again. So then, so because of that, uh, you you can kind of uh, keep kind of think about states that way, uh, and that's how I kind of come up with uh, this deck. Or yeah, it's a did I even need a deck? Yeah, I mean, pop left is more efficient, but but that's why I end up using a deck. Uh, because I know that um, inside, um, and this is kind of similar to the idea of a mono queue, except for uh, or a max queue or, or min queue, depending on how you want to call it, in that you have this idea of uh, everything inside your current data structure, in this case a deck um, or a queue in mono queues and so forth. Uh, once uh, your once something comes out of that queue or bag of a collection um, then it, no, it could never be go back in or that never goes back in because it's never true again um, and then because of that uh, you have this uh, relationship where an, each number only goes in and out once and then from that it's easy to sh see and show that it's uh, O of n um, total and all of one amortized per operation uh, for show first unique um, yeah, and definitely recommend uh, checking this. And uh, I would say, uh, to be honest, um, I, I, so max stack, min stack, those kind of problems, and I think it's one of the previous problems, a min stack, uh, definitely comes up a lot during interviews. Uh, I've been seeing more and more, what I when I learned it, I think went, like way back in the days, uh, we used to call it max Q or min Q. Uh, but in this, but nowadays, it's, it's fancier to call it mono Q. So maybe, you know, uh, and I think that idea, uh, kind of, um, that idea 
is how I kind of solved this problem with uh, this idea of keeping track of a collection that uh, just comes in and out once. And, and I think all those things kind of uh, fit in the same category uh, and definitely worth the practice. And this is a, a unique take on that. Oh, no pun intended, but now I noticed that uh, maybe, it, maybe there's some inception thing where uh, you know, but this is a, a bit of a you know new, novel, unique way. Uh, you could say even the first unique way to uh, uh, you know explore that idea behind the mono queue and come up with something kind of new. So I, I take this form, uh, and it's I don't know if this form would be on a, on an interview per se, at least not yet, but maybe it will be in the future. And also uh, because it builds on a lot of these other concepts that people definitely value now, at least in interviews, you know. Um, Use double linked lists. Uh, uh, I mean, that's kind of what I did with Dex. Um, use Q and check that first seminar was always unique. Oh, that's what I did. Use set or heap to make running time of each operation to O of log n. Okay, that's essentially what I did. Uh, I mean, I, I uh, hand waved a little bit with the lookup table using O of 1 because of hash table and perfect hashing, but uh, depending on how uh, your language structures it, it may be log n with the use. Uh, uh, tree set or something like that, but uh, but the same idea. And I actually did think about heap in the beginning as a, uh, as well. If you have paid attention to co uh, the conversation, but uh, but yeah. But that's all I have for this form. I uh, hope y'all enjoy it. Let me know if you have comments, questions, and let me know how you did. Uh, was this challenging enough? It's a new, the first new form this week. So uh, so yeah, it's always cool. Anyway, I will see you next video. Bye bye.